I want to say thank you to Steve Gian, who's our sound tech today, Reverend Dr. John Carr, who's joining me in pro offering prayers and affirmation, and Sarah Eliado, who's our facility manager. We're great, grateful for each one and their contribution to making this live streaming possible. Appreciate so much. The volunteers at City of Light are just amazing, and we are so grateful for them. You know, there is an incredible spiritual work that can be done in antiquing. Yeah, I know, it's strange to think about that, but let's just look at the wonderful work you do in antiquing when you are searching out and seeking for hidden treasures. Hidden treasures being that which you may find within uh, maybe a basement, an attic, a storage room somewhere. And quite often when we encounter people in those occasions, they may say, I don't really know what this is. And secretly you may say, hmm, they don't know what they have in possession. You may find that there are those who would say, you know, this is just a piece of junk. It uh, really doesn't work. It's not, uh, you know, all that fabulous. Uh, I've had it stored for years and they're not seeing what the artisans have designed or what the furniture maker's vision was all about or what the plan and the purpose for this was. And they can't see its original state. What they see and focus on is what's now right in front of them, often something beat up, battered, not looking so fantastic. They can't see its true nature or its beauty or that deep within there is something uh, magnificent there behind all that lackluster and damaged finish. They're not seeing how it was made. You see, this is a wonderful spiritual truth. In antiquing, you're called to look for hidden treasure to see how something is made, to see the value deep within it, to not look at the outside or to not look at what you may see uh, in front of you, but look and see what was the creator of this item, of this antique, what was their intention? What was their desire? What was their vision? What was their dream? Quite often in life, we miss out because we don't think clearly about who we are what the creator's intention was in the design of creating each and every one of us. We don't take a, a time to really understand how we work in this world. And we look to the exterior quite often and judge, judge it harshly, the exterior, the physical, beaten, bruised, harshly uh, uh, used and damaged and full of flaws and unworthy. Well, today's wisdom lesson and truly, it's words of wisdom. It comes to us from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 48. We read it together so beautifully. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Heaven, Jesus made very clear, is within. That perfection that is God, the Father, the source, the divine, is found within. It's within each and every one of us. Be therefore perfect, discovering this wonderful perfection that's already there deep within us. Our purpose is to live recognizing this perfection within us, the all good, that which is perfect, that which is God. I like to refer to God as the all good. I like to find different names and terms for God that help to reframe the image of truly what God is referring to God as the all good, that God is the all, and that through everything that is good for us, and that good is everywhere and in all things, God, the all good. This is truly our journey of self-realization because self-realization is what the story of this Bible is all about. Scripture after scripture, passage after passage, ancient truth unfolding in dynamic ways, helping us to experience a journey of self-realization, realizing who we are, 
helping us to understand this. This is our great work. This is our journey to welcome and understand who we are, the perfection that's within us. Knowing oneself really is one of the most important things that we can do to pause and to know who we are, what makes us tick and how we work, to be curious about who we are and why we respond to certain things in certain ways. This may be the single most important per thing a person can do in life because who we are is the foundation and the basis of every single thing we do, how we think, the choices we make, how we navigate life. Our success depends upon it. Ernest Holmes writes a great affirmation. And as we opened up and took out that affirmation, we read them, we took them to heart, we allowed that message to reaffirm within our hearts and our lives a powerful truth. Affirmations can be so uh, amazing to, and so powerful for us in our journey. Affirmations are sentences aimed to affect the conscious and the subconscious mind so that in turn, it affects our behavior, our thinking patterns, our habits, and our environment. They bring up related mental images into the mind, which inspire and energize and motivate. This affirmation encompasses this beautiful book we read today from the book of Matthew. There is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. That life is my now. For our success in our spiritual journey, it really depends on us understanding this. This is the wisdom lesson for our lives. So let's break that down. Let's take a look at that affirmation and find how the power of scripture and the teaching of ancient truth has reinforced these words. There's one life. First Timothy two verse five says, there is one God, there is one power. It's saying to us, emphasizing there's one God, one power, one presence. That's what's unfolding for us. What an understanding that we must grasp for our lives. That God being power, presence, and source. That when this word life is spoken, we're speaking of this energy within us. This divine presence. This amazing power. We want to think sometimes that there are two. Well, we think the power of good versus the power of evil. And we constantly want to say in life, there's two powers around us. And we live in a duality of thinking. But if evil has a power of its own, it's, uh, it, it's not there, it's not present, it's only when we get power. Evil is simply error. And evil comes from our ways of error. When we're thinking in error, it is we then who give power to it. Because if there were two powers and they were the same, they would be one. If they were the same, yes, they'd simply be one. And if they're not the same, well, they would cancel out each other. So what we understand is that the ancients have been trying to get across to us this powerful understanding that there is one power, one life, one presence, one source. And it's our lack of understanding that wants to create two. And then we create in error thinking this duality. There is one life and that life is God. This is what God is. God is this wonderful, uh, infinite intelligence, this infinite wisdom, this infinite mind, the ancient truth of the ages. Quite often we try, try to conceptualize God. And in our efforts to conceptualize God, what we've tried to say is that, well, God looks like this, acts like this. This is the personality and character of God. We've tried to paint out that, a picture of God. And unfortunately, what's happened for us is we've conceptualized something and we've taken that conceptualized image literally. And what we've done is we've created more humanity. There was a beautiful woman and people referred to her that she moved in great elegance, the elegance of a swan. And they kept saying, when she moves, it's like a swan. And so they began to think of that so often that they began to think of her now as the swan, but as a swan. See, this is the way we have conceptualized God. Yet what God is, is this energy, this life force within us. That God is this energy that is everywhere. We quite often say there is not a spot where God is not. 
God is with you right now in your room where you are. God is with you where you are seated. God is with you while you're watching this live streaming. God is with us in this campus here at City of Light. God is everywhere all around the world. That's this wonderful presence, this divine power that we call God. There is one life, that life is God, and that life is perfect. We find in the beautiful passage from 2 Samuel 22, verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. Every aspect of God is perfection. Created in God's image is what we are, and we're all perfect, for the way God works is always perfect. Not just kind of perfect, but all perfect, always perfect. There was an elderly man telling his neighbor, I just bought a new hearing aid. It cost me $4,000, but it's state of the art and it is perfect. Really? The neighbor asked, what kind is it? 1230. Uh, what? what? <laughs> Obviously that hearing aid wasn't that perfect. <laughs> In God, God's work is always perfection. Leviticus 19.2 says, Speak to the entire congregation of the Israelites and tell them, Tell them, be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Holy meaning, I, the Lord your God, am complete, whole, perfect, one with all. We're made from this thing called God, and that's why we are called sons of God, daughters of God, children of God, relations of God. We're made from that which is perfect and that perfection resides within us. That the life within us is perfect is what we want to grasp today. No matter what the circumstances around us, the life within us is perfect. And if we live from this pers perspective that all is perfect, all is good, then everything changes for our life is not happening to you, but happening as we respond to it. It is responding to us and our outlook. What if we began to see and have an outlook of perfection within us? God, perfect within us, whole, complete, holy. And we begin to think and move from that perspective that when the midst of this crisis and this pandemic, what we find is that we're thinking now, all is good, all is perfect, no matter what's going on around me, because I'm not absorbing all of the things through the senses, but I'm releasing these distractions, these difficulties and challenges. And my focus is on the perfect life within me. And all that is unfolding for me is perfection even now. We understand then that it is done to us as we believe. And if we're believing that we're living and existing the perfection of God, demonstrating the perfection of God, allowing that perfect presence and power within us to be at work at all times, then life is responding to you as you believe. So what do you believe? Maybe it's time for us to believe in our It's time for us to see ourselves as perfect and begin to proclaim I am perfect health. I am perfect wealth. I am perfect abundance. I have all that I need. And really embrace the truth of that passage the psalmist writes in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You see, that life is my life now. That life is perfect. That life is God. God is this life. And that life is mine now. We find within scripture that God is referred to as Emmanuel, God with us, God within us. That the divine nature that is God, it dwells in us. And since God dwells in us, we are divine for we are then that revelation, revelation of that amazing power and presence. So we must let go of our focus on all the difficulties and the challenges. It's kind of a challenge for us to just change our outlook, but that's what's required in the journey. For when we do, when we change our focus to the perfect life within us now, not someday, not further down the road, not next month, not six months from now, that everything be the perfect life, but the perfect life is right now. Perfect health, perfect wealth, perfect abundance, 
Prosperity in its perfection is mine right now. You see, this recognition is having this awareness of this great affirmation and allowing to resign, uh, resonate within you, I should say. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, man who was struggling in issues of health and strength, paralyzed in body. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. But before he could do that, he had to see some level of perfection in himself to say, I can do this. Prior to this time, his whole feeling is, I'm not perfect. My health is not perfect. I'm not in a perfect state. My life is not perfect. And Jesus' invitation was, change your thinking, change your focus, change your outlook. Begin to see your perfection right now. Perfection within your hand and stretch it forth. Reach out. And when you do, what happens is we begin to make this shift where we put faith in the perfect versus the belief in our fears, our doubts, and our questionings. So in conclusion, let me say to you this. I invite you to enjoy in saying this over and over again, an affirmation for your day-to-day -day journey. There is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect, and that life is my life right now. It's flowing through me. It's circulating in me. I am one with its rhythm. I am one with every aspect of it. I see my value. I see my source and its original intent in life, that I might live out life perfectly, whole, completely. I see the perfect design of the creator. I look beyond the physical. I look beyond the flaws. I look beyond that which is seemingly battered and bruised in the five senses. And I see the hidden treasure, a treasure deep within my life, the perfect life, the perfect essence, that which is God the perfect life of God in my life now. And so it is. We want to offer you the opportunity to offer your tithes, your gifts and your offerings. So we encourage you following this live feed to go to our website at www.cityoflightatlanta.com. We can't pass that offering plate what we can do is share in the spirit of generosity of knowing and proclaiming this wonderful affirmation that we share each and every week that is of the abundance or the celebration, affirmation and celebration of the abundance in our life. You'll find it on our screen. Let's share it together. Would you, would you join with me? City of Light is a thriving community that is experiencing the abundance of God. We are growing and flourishing the teaching of spiritual truth. As we give and receive, we join now in the divine flow. We know that all we share with life returns to us multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Amen. Thank you so much for your generous tithes and giving. Service today. As we conclude our service today, it is our tradition to offer this song of great peace. We invite you to sing along with us. Yes, there is peace on earth and yes, it begins with me. This perfect life, this life that is God, that God that is perfect peace. Well, it's my life now. It begins right here, right now in this moment. Join with me as we sing together. Peace.
pray with me. Let's pray together. This we know to be our truth, that the power and presence of the divine is at work within our lives. That there is one life. That life is God. That life is perfect. And this is my life right now. A life of perfection. A life of unfolding the all good in every moment of our journey. We do not focus on fears. We do not focus on stress, worry, or doubt. We celebrate now the very power of that perfection, that wholeness and completeness and work within our life. We claim it with great joy, with great affirmation, and great gratitude. This is our week to celebrate the powerful perfection of the Spirit of God unfolding within us in brand new ways as we shift our focus and live out this affirmation each and every day. So with great gratitude, we are releasing these words. This is my life. This is God. This is perfect. And this is what my now is. As I celebrate it, knowing this to be my truth, I release it as together I say, and so it is. To take each moment and live each moment eternally yes there is peace on earth thank you again for joining us at city of light we hope that you are feeling the power and presence of god right where you are know that we're praying with you we're praying for you we're joining in believing for the highest and best and we know that god is unfolding something amazing for us individually and collectively together as a community, as well as for our city, our state, our nation, and our world. We are living in the power of expectancy, knowing that God is doing some amazing things right now. And we invite you to live in that understanding, that great truth, expecting the amazing unfolding in your journey. God bless you. Thank you again for joining at City of Light. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday for our live streaming of our services.